thanks to Jorn and your great team um, for the privilege of being here and taking part in such a beautifully hosted event. Um, and for this opportunity now to share a wee taste of Falkland Estate, which I think most of you are going to be coming on to, but um, for those of you who aren't, you will, you will get that taste. A wee taste of its history and present state, and something of the journey that we've embarked on, um, so that it and we can better serve the emerging future. Thanks also, Jon, for suggesting the title of From Stewards to Stewardship, which I'll explain as we go on. Um, and I want a little bit of a warning to say I am a bit ragged. Um, I'm probably the one person in this room who hasn't got a degree to my name, partly because I'm not disciplined enough. Um, but we are also a bit raw uh, at Falkland, and I say that in a kind of a positive way. We're working with something that is quite new, and we don't know far more than we do know. So this image um, here shows the marks and archaeological evidence in Falkland's landscape that show it has been a place, a potent place of power and influence for thousands of years. We heard this morning from John Rowan about the Dundee Hill Fort, and here is a recent illustration of how we think Falkland Hill may have looked, um, and, and, and we think it's more than may have because it's, it's based on evidence, around 650 AD. And something of how the land was used at that point with a well-fortified settlement dominate the lands, dominating the landscape, um, but also you'll see the woods beneath and at that point um, a natural water system below. So moving now to 1633, this is Scotland's second oldest landscape picture, um, drawn by an Alexander Keerinks, a Dutch painter, showing the land and the estate in 1633. This was the last great oak forest in central Scotland. It was also the hunting lodge and seat of the Stuart kings and queens, a line which started off with Robert II and ended with Bonnie Prince Charlie. Um, and I was personally very moved to hear Lisbeth this morning singing that powerful song, Over the Sea to Sky, which resonates for those of us in Scottish culture with Bonnie Prince Charlie. As well as this royal stuff, um, Falkland has been long a place of vibrant forest culture. Here, illustrated by a man in the 17th century um, called John Geddy, who invented a new form of beehive that went on to influence beekeep beekeeping in and beyond Europe. So it's a place of a long view. Um, we're about to celebrate next year 200 years since the division of the commonty, of the common land before it was all um, brought into larger ownership. And here, this image is, which you will walk right past, is what remains today of the 12th century castle in the foreground and the palace in the background that was home and hunting lodge of the Stuart kings and queens. Here is where I grew up, as son of the laird, with three older sisters, son of the laird and hereditary keeper of the palace, myself, a steward, um, who a couple of years ago did some DNA tests, and um, it has been confirmed that I can go back a bloodline to Robert II, King Robert II of Scotland. So Robert II, interestingly, he came from a line of stewards who had then married the, king, the king's daughter, 
Robert the Bruce's daughter and thereby gain the crown. So the original word of steward is an Anglo-Saxon word meaning hall keeper. Um, a role of service to others, um, of caring at that point for the hall. Um, in a sense, I like to think that 20, gosh, the, the, the 21st century hall keeper. But at that point, the role of steward moved from someone initially appointed on merit to a hereditary role, and then on to being one of kingship itself. In this transition, I believe that the very essence of the steward's role, that of service, of looking after something that matters on behalf of others, was lost, given away, perhaps even sold out, because a king cannot account to himself. So in my life and in my personal journey, I have enjoyed both a struggle and a dance with privilege and duty. I ran away to become a community worker, living with homeless people in Glasgow, and married a working class Glaswegian, and then decided in 1990 to return to grapple with the challenge of wealth and opportunity. So today at the Centre for Stewardship, we are now working on how to reclaim and refresh the concept, of pract concept and practice of stewardship for today's world. Um, someone was talking today about what, 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 what might true stewardship looks like. Um, and in a sense, it's about right relationship. So this, as this picture shows, involves extending the circle of stewardship into nature, beyond any hall made by human hands, from me to we, as we work both with and for others, including those who are crying out for change and opportunity. Our struggle, uh, or our dance, involves holding firm to essential values and letting go of what is no longer needed, as we were encouraged to earlier today. It also um, involves a form of leadership that might learn from the wild geese and is about teeming with life. As we believe that the best kind of a leader is one who leads people to a place where they need a leader no more. As you will find out if and when you join in tonight's Kaylee. So Falkland has been a source of inspiration for centuries. This old site of a 19th century temple built um, by a woman who was half Indian and half Scottish is a great place to take the long view. It is also a place um, shown here that beautifully reflects Patrick Geddes' valley section. We heard briefly this morning of Patrick Geddes, who was professor of botany at Dundee, later professor of town planning at Bombay, coined this phrase, think global, act local, and by leaves we live. And every aspect of this stained glass version of um, his valley section, his thinking machine, could have been seen from the site of the temple. So it's a great place to start building and seeding the future, taking account of the inscription that you can see at the bottom, and I'll translate from Latin, microcosm of nature, seat of humanity, theater of history, and good place of the future. However, Falkland is an old place of weaving, and I like to think that perhaps 10 years from now, we might have woven something more akin to a tapestry of hope. And if you know anything about weaving, you have this big loom. So with a loom framed by a high purpose of realizing the collective potential of people and place, and underpinned by the discipline of the triple bottom line, 
and held on the left and the right by the people and the place. And again with weaving, anybody who knows a bit about the practice is, there is the warp, there are the tense strings here from the, the aspiration, what we are trying to do, and the realities on the ground of how we can do so within our limits, in terms of our social limits, our human limits, um, the environment, environmental limits, and also the economic limits. And that's the warp. And then there's the weft. And the weft is a lighter process. And the weft, I think, here involves working and drawing from the place, from the natural resources and the cultural resources, and weaving something beautiful for the future. So we are starting a new foundation, a new structure rooted in the community to take on ownership of the estate. At a time when the factory just a few months ago, which has been there for over a hundred years and takes up 10 acres of the borough, has come down. And the Falkland Foundation's purpose will be to hold and act as an ultimate host of the continuing unfolding of our stewardship work. Falkland Estate already provides work for about 10 times the number of people it did 25 years ago. Maybe this old picture stone here behind me, discovered a century ago in an old steading, could be our foundation stone. So the foundation will ensure the continuing cultivation of our local food stewardship, moving from field to plate via the local markets which we have now in the town hall and assemblies of people who want to eat good, healthy and affordable food. Um, Bridie here on the right is one of the new farmers who started about two years ago with a few acres of land and herself and her partner Nat are going to be providing the food for tonight. Um, Nat, who's also a very young man, has recently been offered a scholarship next year by Cordon Bleu. And he and Bridie told me a couple of weeks ago, and I said, oh, does that mean you'll never come back? And they said, no, nope, we'll be away for nine months and we'll be back. So, and the other project or, or, or another kind of project that is working is something called Woodworks. Um, which has been, a, we've had a two-year pilot with support from Dundee, actually, in part, um, but is about working with creative and enterprising young people who want to make more of our woods. Um, and Lottie, who, Lottie, are you still here? So Lot, Lot, Lottie, who was here this morning, um, is part of that, and you'll see her tonight. So just to end, as well as crafting, yes, the, the, the last bit is, is of crafting simple structures that help people to live, lead, and build healthy lives through an initiative that we started about seven years ago, um, which has led to Scottish Government changing both planning and building regulations so that more people can dwell, dwell for a little while in huts in the woods. And finally, to end, Essentially, this is all about going with the flow. And as with the water, that means letting go and trusting that if we flow away continuously, we will be continually replenished.